Hello friends, uh, welcome. In the last video, we have seen how to find out the shape function for the four node rectangular element by using a Langrages interpolation formula. So this is the Langrages interpolation formula for the two dimension case. So where uh, zeta varies in this direction and eta varies in this direction. Now, uh, we will see the very important uh, property of the shape function. And what is the property of the shape function? The it is that the shape function at for example n1 the shape function n1 will be 1 at node point 1 whereas it is 0 at all other node points means shape function is 1 at that point and it is 0 at all other points so you can verify this so you can just put the values of these coordinates n1 so what are the coordinates zeta is minus 1 and eta is minus 1. So if we put zeta is as a minus 1, so minus minus plus 1, 1 plus 1, 2. Again, eta is as a minus 1, so 1 minus 1 minus 1 plus 1, so 2, 2 into 2, 4, so 4 divided by 4 will be a 1. So <coughs> it is verified that n1 is 1 at node 1 and it remains 0 at all other node points okay so we'll put the values of the coordinates of 2 in this okay what is zeta zeta is 1 so 1 minus 1 0 so whole term becomes 0 so n1 will be 0 coming to the 3 put the value of the, of the coordinates so what is the zeta eta 1 1 so 1 minus 1 0 so and this again 1 minus 1 0 so whole term becomes 0 n1 is 0 again if you put the values of the coordinates 4 zeta is minus 1 so 1 1 minus 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 plus 1 plus 1 2 and here zeta eta is 1 so 1 minus 1 0 so then this becomes 0 so n1 is 0 at all other points so this is the important property another one property important property is that the summation of all shape functions is 1 so if you sum up this you will find that summation should will come as a 1 so these are two important uh, properties and with this uh, we will be able to find out the shape functions uh, intuitively also. So you apply the Langrages interpolation formula for the 9 node rectangular element and this is the exercise you find out the shape functions for <coughs> all a 9 nodes okay, by using a Langrages interpolation formula. Now we will see the next that is the serendipity elements. What are the serendipity elements? So basically these elements are called as a boundary node family elements because all the nodes are only at the boundary. You see all the nodes are only at the boundary. There is no center node. In these elements nodes are only on the boundaries. So Zinkvis called the, these elements as a serendipity family elements by referring to the famous princess of serendip noted for the chance discoveries. <coughs> so there is sometimes uh, means uh, internal node um, does, does not contribute much when you go for the complete meshing. So these elements are used generally there um, where internal node is not required. So now here how to find out the shape function. Here we can apply, apply the language interpolation formula that just we have seen because it is a symmetry. But here 8 node rectangular element we cannot apply the language interpolation formula because center node is absent. Means if you take this as a point only two, or two nodes are if you take along this line only two nodes. If you take along this line there are total three nodes. Along this line three nodes. But Along this line, there are only two nodes. Along this line, only two nodes. That's why we cannot apply the Langrages interpolation formula here. So we'll obtain the shape function by some another technique. Okay. <coughs> so this is the eight node rectangular element, and uh, we want to we want to obtain the shape function uh, for the serendipity family elements. Just now we discussed the properties of the shape function, and what is that? The shape function is 1 at that node and it is 0 at all other node points. And another property, summation of all the shape functions will come out to be as a 1. Using this property, 
let's try to find out the shape functions for this type of elements so consider the node 1 now we'll draw minimum number of lines which will cover all the node points except one so how means we have to cover the all node other node points by drawing the minimum number of lines so i will draw one line i will draw one line <coughs> along this i will draw one line along this okay so where the equation of line is zeta is equal to 1 <coughs> or 1 is 1 minus zeta is equal to 0 then i will draw one more line that is eta is 1 along this line n1 should be 0 okay now all nodes are covered but still 5 and 8 are remaining so i will draw one more line passing through the node point 8 and 5 so three minimum number of lines i have drawn this is line for the equation of line is zeta is 1 or 1 minus zeta is equal to 0 one more line i have drawn this zeta is equal to 1 or 1 minus zeta is equal to 1 and this line i have drawn for the equation equation for that line you can write as a 1 plus zeta plus zeta is equal to 0 <coughs> that you can just verify just put the values of this coordinates this equation should satisfy for example node 5 if i put zeta is equal to 0 eta is minus 1 0 minus 1 plus 1 so this will be a 0 it is satisfied again zeta is minus 1 so minus 1 plus 0 plus 1 will be 0 means whatever equations i have written this is the equation of this line so three lines i have drawn and what we need to ensure that n1 will be 0 along this line so accordingly it is written and if you just multiply these lines equations okay and force this take some constants and force this multiplication equal to 1 because n1 is 1 at node point 1 okay so then you can find out the constant c so here the values of eta and zeta you have to put the coordinates of point 1 okay so you will put n1 because you are forcing n1 you are forcing n1 as 1 because n1 should be 1 at this point and to get this n1 as 1 here what should be the value of this constant c so we will multiply by c constant and all these equations of lines so putting the values of the coordinates what is zeta zeta is here minus 1 1 minus minus plus 1 eta is minus 1 so this will plus 1 and this will be a minus minus so if you calculate this you will get the value of constant as a c is equal to minus 1 by 4 okay it will be a minus 1 by 4 then this will be the value so once you put the, this values of constant you use this equation okay you use this equation that will of 10 so n1 is equal to c is minus 1 by 4 so my 1 by 4 multiply these equations as it is now this equation ensures that n1 will remain 0 at all other node points you can just verify this so you just go to the node 2 suppose okay so n1 should be 0 at node 2 right so if you put the value of this zeta eta here what are the zeta is zeta is 1 so 1 minus 1 0 so n1 is 0 again go take the 7th okay what is the coordinates of the 7th 0 and 1 so zeta is 1 0 and eta is 1 so 1 minus 0 that is 1 and this will be a 1 minus 1 0 so n1 will be a 0 so this equation means you have written these equations and this is ensuring that n1 is 0 along this line <coughs> So in this way, just by writing the equation of line, uh, we can find out the shape of one more case we will consider. So it will be uh, easy to understand. Now consider the mid side node 5, hmm, this one. Now again repeat the same procedure. I have to draw minimum number of lines which will cover all the nodes points except 5. Okay. So I will draw one line like this, that is zeta is 1 okay then i will draw a line one more line like this that is eta is 1 
and uh, still these two nodes are remaining so i will draw a line like this let it overlap because anyway it will satisfy so what is that this will be a zeta i is minus 1 so you will get the equation of lines 1 minus zeta is equal to 0 1 minus zeta is equal to 0 and this will be a 1 plus zeta is equal to 0 <coughs> and at node 5 it should ensure that if you put zeta in these equations okay in this equation whatever the equation of line if you put these values so it should come out to be as a 0 so if you put zeta eta is, is a minus minus plus 1 and if you put here so um, at node 5 uh, sorry means uh, if you put the values of zeta eta for all other coordinates except 5 this should come as a 0 but if you put the values now we have to force we have to force that n5 should be 1 okay n5 should be 1 at node point 1 so we will write some constant multiplied by these equations of lines okay and this equation we are forcing equal to 1 so if you put the values of coordinates of point 5 that is uh, zeta is 0 this will be a eta is minus minus plus 1 and zeta is again 0 so you will get the value of constant as a c is 1 half and n5 will be equal to if you substitute this value here then you will get n5 is equal to this so this is the shape function the idea is that by using the property of the shape function that is n1 is 1 at that node point and 0 at all, all other nodes we will be writing the equations of lines means we will draw lines we will write the equations of lines and that equations of lines will multiply together and we will put some constant and we will force this equation equal to 1 at node point this and already if you are writing these equations this n5 will go 0 there so by following the same procedure we can find out the shape functions for the all other node points and this is the exercise you can just um, find out the shape functions remaining all shape functions and verify your answer as well okay so the shape functions are given you can find out the shape functions for the serendipity elements by just drawing the equations of lines okay i think this is clear now we'll move to the next point uh, that is isoparametric formulation and uh, I will just introduce this what is the isoparametric formulation and then in detailed discussion we will do in the next video. Why we need a isoparametric formulation <coughs> or basically what is the isoparametric formulation. Now if you see the actual problems. So these actual problems uh, there it involves complicated geometry. Many curve shapes are there and uh, to um, mesh. Uh, such a, a geometries so we cannot use this is a straight edge elements whatever elements we have defined this these rectangular straight edge elements it will not cover the curved area if you can see in this here so if you use the straight edge element this portion it will not cover and if you see in this figure completely you can find the all are curved edges and for that purpose we have to have a flexibility of uh, using the curved elements and this isoparametric formulation concept this isoparametric formulation gives the flexibility to use the curved elements while meshing the geometry okay so how it is done means how we can uh, by writing the formulation for the straight edge elements how we can transfer this to the curved elements right means how we can map this straight edge element to the actual element which is curved shape that uh, concept we will study uh, in the next video uh, and this concept is very much important after the uh, uh, introduction of this isoparametric formulation the finite element method has become very much powerful so any type of complicated geometry problems any type of problems where there is a complicated geometry can be solved by using the finite element theory okay thank you so that we'll see in the next video